in section 1.2, we are continuing our exploration of solving linear systems, more specifically related to the row reduction of matrices and what we call echelon form of a matrix. So we are again going to be redefining that, that algorithm for solving systems that we saw in section 1.1, helping us to improve the method for solving and analysis of our systems. So to get us started, I want to talk to you about echelon form of a matrix. So an M by N matrix is said to be an echelon form or row echelon form, they mean the same thing, if it has the following properties. So the first property is that all non-zero rows are above rows of zeros. So all non-zero rows are above rows of zeros. The second property is that each leading entry of a row is to the right of a leading entry above it. So each leading entry of a row is to the right of the leading entry above it. And last but not least, our third property that makes a matrix in echelon form is that all entries in a column below a leading entry are zero. So all entries in a column below a leading entry are zeros. So again, we say that a matrix is an echelon form if all non-zero rows are above rows of zeros, if each leading entry of a row is to the right of the leading entry above it, and if all entries in a column below a leading entry are zeros. And this should sound familiar. This is equivalent to that upper triangular form we saw in the last section. So echelon form is equivalent to that upper triangular form we saw in the last section. So an example of such a matrix might look like the following. So let's say our first row is one, two, three. And let's do an augmented matrix here. One, two, three, four. The second row would be zero, five, six, seven. And then let's suppose our last row is all zero, 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 zero. And so we can see that all of the non-zero rows are above rows of zeros. R3 is our row of zeros. Check. Each leading entry of a row is to the right of the leading entry above it. So if we're thinking about the second row, we can see that our leading entry here is 5, and it is to the right of the leading entry above it. And last but not least, all entries in a column below a leading entry are zeros. So here's the leading entry of column 1. It has all zeros below. Here is the leading entry of column two, and it has a zero below. So these circled, these leading entries, these are called our pivot positions. So our leading entries are called pivots. Now, this is not the most simple 
echelon form. The one that we're going to be working with more frequently is row reduced echelon form. So row reduced echelon form is going to maintain these three properties, but there are an additional two properties that are just as important. So let's take a look. So if that same M by N matrix satisfies the following additional conditions, it is said to be in reduced echelon form, or more commonly called row reduced echelon form. And oftentimes we'll abbreviate this, R, R, E, F, row reduced echelon form. So again, we have those three initial properties of echelon form. And in addition to those, we have the following two. So the fourth property is that the leading entry in each non-zero row is one. So the leading entry in each non-zero row is one. And our fifth and final property is that each leading one is the only non-zero entry in that column. So each leading one is the only non-zero entry in that column. So this is a row equivalent matrix to the echelon form with these two additional, additional conditions. The leading entry in each non-zero row must be one, and each of these leading ones is the only non-zero entry in that column. So let's go ahead now and think about an illustration similar to what we did in for echelon form. So an example of an augmented matrix in row reduced echelon form might look like the following. So we could have one, zero, zero, little dotted line there for our augmented matrix. And we'll say that this is one. The second row would be zero, one, zero, say two. And the third row could be all zero, 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 zero. In order for this not to be a contradiction, the right-hand side must also be equal to zero. So notice here we again have two pivots, just like the echelon form example, but both of these pivots are ones, and everything below the pivots is zero. So we have two pivots here. And those pivots, those pivot positions help us in solving, help us with that row reduction algorithm. So they're used to help row reduce. So this is those three basic operations that we looked at in the last section. They still hold true here. Replacement, interchanging, and scaling. So another example of something in echelon form might look like, oh, actually, before we do that, and that's the second example, what, is this, what are these pivots telling us? What is this matrix telling us here? Well, this is telling us the solutions. Right? This is letting us know that x sub 1 is equal to 1 because the first column is associated with the variable x sub 1. So x sub 1 is equal to 1. The second row is telling us that x sub 2 is equal to 2. And so this second pivot position, because the second column of a matrix is associated with the second variable, this second row tells us that x sub 2 is equal to 2. And now notice here how the last row is entirely zeros. There's no pivot in that third position. This just lets us know that there is no x sub 3 in this case, and that our solution vector, vector x, is in R2. So x sub 1, x sub 2, is 1, 2. 
we do not include x sub 3 because there is no x sub 3. That pivot position, again, is 0. It's non-existent.